Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. I've discovered that while I'm junk journaling, a lot of it is like a creative practice and I think it helps us in all of our art and it's a great place to also display all of our art. So I thought what a fun, easy, beginner-friendly way to do creative exercises, improve our artistic confidence and, you know, refine your personal style or find it if you haven't found it already. So I hope you'll join me and, you know, we'll just play about weekly. Oh, weekly-ish. Hello, everyone. So today we're going to have a go at doing these burrito pockets. You can pop them on a belly band like I have on the left there or you can just use them as a little regular pocket. They're pretty cute, pretty easy. Not quite sure where I first learnt to do these. But again, we'll have a bit of creative practice and make something while we're at it. So best way to practice, I reckon. Firstly here, I'm just squaring off my paper. So these do work best if you start with a square because then you get that nice diamond at the top and all you do is you fold in the edges. It is as simple as that. So you just meet the points in the middle and then you can fold them down. So I uh, try and get the folds the same size on both sides. You can measure it to make it exactly right if you want to, but I just do it by eye. You can see I'm just refolding that a little bit because I didn't think it lined up quite right. Now this first one, I'm doing this as a really big one because I had this gorgeous tissue paper that I thought would be nice to line it with. But I thought this would be really cute to use for some happy mail or something like that, you know, when you're sending things to people. So, yeah, probably a bit big for a journal or for the journals that I do. Uh, yeah, there you go. It is beautiful tissue paper, this. I actually got this in the uh, swap that Tracy Fox did, the scrap swap that she did recently. So my partner sent me that. Just so beautiful. Absolutely love it. And it works perfectly for this. So this is something that you can do it with any paper. As I said, if you get a square, then that just makes it uh, sit right. And all I'm doing is I'm lining it. So I'm gluing it down first and then I'm just going to trim off the corners at the top and bottom. Now, I am only doing little basic ones and I'm doing little clusters on the closure, but... I want you to just play and, you know, come up with your own ideas. So see that top point? You could round that off. You could make that a different kind of shape. You could completely cut it off all the way. You could fold up the bottom and make it a pocket instead of, you know, one that goes all the way through. So yeah, this is just the basic structure. I'm doing it with a few different papers just so that you can see the process. But yeah, it's a wonderful one that you can take in all sorts of directions. Really cute, really easy. You can do it to fill a whole page. As I said, they go really nicely on top of belly bands because then you've got something going horizontally and something going vertically. Just lots of fun. So here I'm snipping up some of my material. This is some hand-dyed cheesecloth that I picked up. And then I had this little tree button that I thought would be very cute on the top. That's just a little piece of the paper that I cut off one of the corners. I just tore around the edge and all I'm doing is a bit of a cluster. So just seeing if I think it looks okay and yep, I'm happy with it. So I did ink around all the edges just so that you can see it pop a little bit and see a little bit of the contrast. And then I just glue underneath one corner and on the top of the other one just so that they meet and then I can put my cluster on top. It really is that simple. These are quick, you can make a whole load of them and uh, have a whole heap ready for, you know, next time you're doing a journal page. Really, really easy. I'm going to be doing the uh, stab binding, I think, soon. I think that'd be nice because sometimes when we do our journals, we don't have pages that we can fold in half and we want to bind single sheets. And it's really, really nice if the binding is decorative as well. So yeah, again, 
when you do your step bindings, I'll, you know, show you how you can create your own patterns and, you know, make that a little bit differently. But yep, be patient. <laughs> it may take me a little while to get there. So this is the first one basically complete. All I'm using is art glitter glue to put it all on. And I just decided that I'd tie a string through the button. And this is just a little wooden button, as I said, that is a little stylized tree. I believe I picked them up really cheaply off eBay, just a selection of them. I like doing that sometimes. And these wooden buttons are nice because they actually sit quite flat. So even though there is some height, they don't bulk up your journal too much. And of course, I put on too much glue. So, <laughs> so I had to blot it all up. So there we go. There is number one. As I said, it's huge. So I think it'd be great for a happy mail or something along those lines. That's what I was thinking anyway. So here's the next one. You know, those little, I don't know, maybe other people don't do this. I often buy those little square scrapbook paper pads because firstly, they're reasonable, uh, quite cute. I like the size. I often like the papers in them. So they're the perfect size to do these burritos, I discovered, because these will fit on most of my journal pages. Now, this time I did attempt to measure. I was using my mat to try and align the middle corners and then folding it up on the bottom. However, I, <laughs> I still got it off. See why I don't give you measurements? That's because... I always have to change them and I never get them quite right anyway. And looking at the video here, I can see that it's still not exactly right. However, it adds a rustic handmade finish. It's fine if they don't match exactly. It's really not a problem. So on this one, I did some cheesecloth again and I had a circle punch. And this time I had a little chipboard shape that I picked up, you know, $2 shop and I had used it as a stencil. So it had all these different paints and inks on it. So now it was ready to, you know, just put in as a decoration. Again, nice and flat, but still adding a little bit of dimension. So sticking that down, how easy are they? I think that's one of the nice things about these is a little cluster on top gets you practised at collaging and clusters and it's really obvious that it just goes in the middle there. So I think that makes it a little bit easier. The other way that you could decorate is you could decorate something along the back, you know, on the triangle that goes underneath, the diamond at the top and bottom. Yeah, there's a number of ways that you can play with these. But yeah, a nice little piece just to practice our clusters and to practice our little collaging. All fun, right? Okay, so here is the last one. And this is the one I think that I cut down a little bit because it wasn't a complete square. So when I've trimmed off the top of the paper pad, I haven't got it quite right. So that's no problem. You can fix that. So if you have one that's not quite square, just trim your triangles and then you can get it square or you might like the wonky look sometimes that can work really well like you know in a fairy journal something like that where it's all a bit skew if and that kind of thing so that piece that I did cut off the top I'm using that across the middle and then I had just a nice little flat wooden button that I'm using as the embellishment on this particular one so again, inking around all the edges and I inked that strip as well. And I don't know why I inked the hole because I'm not going to see it, but <laughs> I inked the hole in the middle of that strip. But as you'll see in a moment, it just gets covered up. So again, just another really simple way to decorate up a little burrito. And I don't know where I got the term burrito. Someone I was obviously watching called them burritos. Someone out there might remember um, who term them that or if that's the proper term for them I don't know but yeah burrito because they wrap in on each other so isn't this nice for a square piece of paper and the great thing is if you use a piece of paper that's rectangle the piece that you can cut off or the piece that you do cut off you can use that to help you decorate it which I think is a bit cool 
I just added a little bit of aging around that button as well. Again, I tied a piece of string in it and popped it on top. Now, I think I did it just, yeah, so this, this, <laughs> that was just a nice simple one. So those three were just with the buttons. Now, on the last one, I thought, well, I had this lovely book page on my desk. So let's make one out of that two book pages do these beautifully. And I really love the look of the text. I didn't square off the edge. I left the edges on the text there because I really liked that. And then I had a nice piece of music page, which was another piece that came in the swap. And I used that to line it with this time because I love the contrast of music paper and book page with the text. I think it's really cool. So yeah, that's what I did. So just kind of folding it and then I tore down the edge. So again, no measuring. I am measuring to the piece that I'm using. So when you work with scraps, oftentimes you find that you measure to the pieces that you're using as opposed to come up with an exact measurement, holding things up against each other, that kind of thing. Hmm, or maybe that's just me. But <laughs> Alrighty, so just tearing this down to pop inside the back there. I hope everyone is doing well. Goodness me, I cannot believe we are already in February, almost Valentine's Day. The year just flies by, doesn't it, nowadays? The older you get, the quicker it goes. I remember when I was a kid feeling like it was going to take forever for time to pass and always wishing your life away almost because you're always wishing that, you know, the holidays are coming or the holidays are going to be over soon so you see your friends again or, you know, all that kind of thing. Just inking up the music page a little bit here too to add a little bit of weathering into this one. And I don't know, I think as always, the last one that I did is my favourite. Although I do like that first one for the Happy Mail with that beautiful tissue paper inside it. So yeah, maybe the first and last this time. Now this time I had a necklace that broke and I had these, they're sort of plastic metal looking wheels. You can just see it there. So that's what I used on this. And I was sure that I was going to use those circles that I've sewn together there on the top left of screen on one of these, but I didn't this time. So, you know, they'll be used on something else. So anyway, just gluing down the back and I didn't want to change my placement because I thought I'd never get it back. So I kind of glued top down, <laughs> you know how that goes. Oh, I love that. All right. So just finishing off, making sure it's all nice and flat, putting my bone folder in. So goodness me, it's been a busy week this week. We had the power out one day. So that was fun and we went to the train museum here in Canberra this week. We had a special tour around with one of the guys who has some carriages there because my son just loves trains. So we got to see all the trains and we got to walk around the whole perimeter, like go through the yard, which you don't normally get to do. We got to see people working on trains. We got to... Um, go inside some carriages. He didn't want to leave. It was so much fun. Oh, I popped a bit of material on this one. So yeah, that was really exciting. And then we've been to the zoo. He's just up at a place we call Cockington Green today, which is a little miniature village. And the main building is based on one of the buildings at Cockington Green in England. And yeah, it's really, really cute, all these little mini villages, but it's got little trains that you can push buttons and make them go around these outdoor tracks and one that you can ride on. So yeah, he'll be having a good time up there. Just like his granddad, my granddad, I should say, his great granddad. My granddad loved trains and used to build them. So the ones that you ride on, I cannot remember the gauge. I'm sorry for those train people out there, but uh yeah, my, uh, <laughs> my youngest son has certainly taken after him with his love of trains. Still even loves Thomas the Tank Engine. So yeah, that'll be lots of fun. So yeah, anyway, really, really busy week out and about everywhere. So I've let him head off with a couple of other people that we know this morning. So he's having a great time. There we go, little button just to finish off that little metallic bit. And I actually use some orange. I don't often use orange, so I was quite impressed with myself. 
I think that's quite cute and a fabulous size. So here they all are. There are the first ones that I showed you as the prototypes. And this one here, that was the picture on the book page that I actually used underneath. It's not lined, whereas the first one was lined with some wallpaper. So that one I'm going to use as a belly band. And there are the others. So all the other ones that we made. So I hope you enjoy having a go at making some. Really easy project. And as I said, can be used for Happy Mail or they can be used in your books. They're great as belly bands. And don't forget, you can change the triangles at the top and bottom, make them different shapes and, you know, cut them out with different scissors. Just have fun and really enjoy. Remember, you can use the hashtag JJWeekly-ish if you're sharing them on your social media. I'd love to see what you play with. And I'll see you next time. Take care. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating. Enjoy.